But so far, episode two has not been uh, a letdown. I th uh, the season in general, but I thought episode two was perfect in terms of like the date activities and how um, in the show is making fun of itself a bit and isn't taking itself too seriously as it tends to do later in the season. Hopefully, that won't happen with this season. So I'll start off with group date number one. This is the one where they do an obstacle course and the guys have to compete to propose the giant ring and they have to like get the ring with their mouths open only in the cake and Rachel and Brian made an appearance and it was pretty darn funny. Um, I I thought I, what I did mention earlier and I will mention it again is I think that Becca in general deals with Jordan perfectly. It's almost like he's kind of like a little brother figure and she's like oh, okay like put on my confidence first <laughs> like whatever you say. I think she's really good at dealing with him and yeah I also said that the um, obstacle course activity reminded me of Survivor. You guys know I'm a diehard Survivor fan and so this just had that Survivor element to it that I love so much. <laughs> and Lincoln, I really wish Lincoln would chill out. He seems incapable of doing that and it's a shame because I really want to like Lincoln and he's making himself extremely unlikable. I did a quick, you know, on, on on the Twitter, I did a little like hashtag the Bachelorette Lincoln just to see what people thought of him, and it's for the most part the same as I feel. I just wish he would uh, get it together, like stop being such a, a like a loony bin. It's too early to be losing your mind like this. You haven't been captive that long yet, Lincoln. Um, and I get I, that it's one thing to be competitive and want to hustle and win because you're just a competitive personality like that. We're used to that. Um, but I think stealing him first, and I, and I said this earlier before I got disconnected, that I do think it's possible a producer was like, well, you should like solidify this connection. Go and, and take her first at the cocktail party. I, I think that that could be attributed to a producer. However, the things he was saying in his ITM about their connection, like he said that Becca always brings out the best in him every time they hang out. Um, I'm going to be the first to call BS on that because... At most, they've had two to three interactions, period. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes together in, in total, and that's including night one. And I just, I just think by saying statements like that and like making it sound like they have this built connection where she brings out the best in him, it's, you don't know each other yet. You're still getting to know each other, and it just takes away his credibility when he talks about the relationship, especially when he talked about the first kiss being like, you know, oh, it was like being on the wings of a pegasus, like, I don't know, flying over a rainbow or the pot of gold or something. He was just taking it to the next level. And I'm like, no, like, just, just take it, be natural, dude. Be cool, be cool. <laughs> he just couldn't do it. Um, and I talk about this in my flare recap, but, and I'm not saying I'm hashtag team Connor in the framed photo being thrown into the pool um, situation. I just think he's slightly less in the wrong here than Lincoln is, and, and in a who started it kind of way. I do think Connor took it way too far, and it's like you can rise above it and not succumb to the provoking that Lincoln was obviously doing. But I just, um, I, I just, Lincoln was really, I was like, dude, stop, you're not making any friends here. And I think that he definitely is the one who started that. Okay, moving on, thankfully, on to Blake's one-on-one. -on -one. Guys, I love Blake. <laughs> he's so cute. I say this in my flare recap, but I think he's like one of those like rare good-looking guys who doesn't quite know how good-looking he is. And I'm almost hesitant to say that in case he watches this and is like, oh, am I really good-looking? But he just really is, um, like he comes off so modest and like he doesn't, He, you know what I mean? Like he just knows how to behave. And if he is isn't modest like he certainly is hiding it very well he just seems really sweet and together and and like becca said in the evening portion of this date at this moment i don't feel like the bachelorette i feel like becca i feel like you want to get to know the me outside of all this craziness first of all i love becca for always calling out herself as being normal and like referring to all this as the craziness i talked about that also in my flitter recap just how relatable and normal she is but also the fact that she would recognize that in him immediately, that you know he's not being swept up by her fancy gowns and the fancy activities. 
Uh, and this date activity, God, they're really milking that break, that heartbreak and breakup in general. Uh, in general, it's. It, it, I do think it's a cute idea for a date and the whole demolishing thing. I know that's a thing people do. Like they'll pay money to go into a room and just like smash stuff. And I think that's a cute idea. And I get how they would tie that into her previous relationship. Honestly, I, you know, some people had an issue with this. I think it's perfectly, you know, they need ideas. I give points for inventiveness. It was a cute, cute date idea. <laughs> um, Elaine says, I'm not sure who I like it, but the male model is amusing. Yes, Jordan is very amusing. I hope he sticks around. He does not bother me at all. Okay, second group date. Uh, the dodgeball group date. This is so great. Um, it reminded me of the dodgeball date from Desiree's season for any more old school people like me. Last night when I was watching, I texted Michael G from Desiree's season. I was like, you should be watching because this really reminds me of you. He totally had on the headband and that was like five years ago. So, uh, you know, I guess they run out of ideas and they have to recycle some date activities, but I didn't mind because this was funny. Um, Let's see, the kids were so fantastic. They were they were like screaming at the guys. I thought that was great. And Leo, oh my gosh, he really, uh, you know, proved that maybe he actually is a stuntman and he, is the, he does the occupation that they claim he does because that was some impressive dodgeball dodging. Um, also, this was so refreshing and I know any of you who have been reading my recaps for a while would have picked up on this, that there was no discussion. It wasn't even, like pretend, like a pretend thing that the losing team would not go in the evening portion of the date. And I so appreciated that. I think the show is past that. You know, the, the, you don't need that element to make the people competitive. They're gonna be competitive no matter what. So uh, it was just nice that it was a given that they would all go to the evening portion of the date and get their time with Becca. So nice. Uh, in the evening, the main thing here was definitely Colton having dated Tia. And while I give him credit for mentioning it. Um, I, do, I, I do wonder if he was concerned it would come out in some other way because I feel like that's the sort of information, you know, it is the bachelor world is a small one and it could have ended up coming out in some way. And I, I guess it's good to be proactive and you know, he definitely emphasized that, you know, he values honesty in a relationship. He wants to be honest. I get all that. I just think that I think him addressing it is, is, is separate. I think it's more that he and Tia dated. I, I want more information there. How did they meet? When did they meet? Was it during the, the airing of Ari's season or right after filming? Was it in that like month or so in between? Was it one date? Was it six dates? You know, was she in talks to be Bachelorette? Was he already in the casting process for Bachelorette? Were they, like, it, there's no way it wasn't on either of their radars that he would be on the season and she might be Bachelorette. That's just fact. So I'm not trying to be all suspicious here and, and mistrusting. I just think that, you know, these are, these are concerns. Like I would, I would be curious if I were Becca and I was happy that Becca did not downplay this. I liked that she showed the right amount of pause given the question marks surrounding this. And so I, I don't have any issue with her keeping him. I think it was actually zero surprise. I mean, the guys that he was up against at the end there, I mean, we didn't even know their names. So we knew Colton was sticking around, especially based on the airtime he's had so far. But I do think it is suspect and it's a shame because I mean, he's so easy to, to love. I just feel like, I'm sure Colton will like, you know, redeem himself. I just think that it, it's, it's not a great look. The timing is, is, is not, not great. <laughs> you guys let me know what you think about that. Uh, finally, Rose Ceremony, Jordan's stripping down. I, <laughs> Jordan's just so funny that he can kind of get away with anything. Like I can see how living in a house with him would be very irritating. But he, he honestly reminds me of like a character from The Office. Like he's so funny. He's so funny. And I, again, part of it is me not knowing if he means to be that funny. It's actually funnier if he doesn't mean to be that funny. <laughs> he's great. I think he's very entertaining. So I have no issues with him. All right, you guys, that's it for episode two. No big surprises there. Um, be sure to read my flare recap, which is going to be up in a second, and my Pretty Pandas recap, which will come up later in the week. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in, and let me know what you guys think of the episode in the comments, because I love to hear your thoughts. Okay, I'll see you here next week on The Morning After. Bye.